those of you who've been patiently waiting, we're gonna we have to have Baba Tanko is not gonna just uh be on this one show. We gotta have a series with this brother because there's just so much to get out. We can't do it in one broadcast, mm -hmm. but we're gonna conclude the show. We're going to roughly 1:30 with I asked Brother Tanko, could you give us seven tips? Seven basic uh, things that will help the parent, the teacher, the youth development specialist, the after school worker be able to better connect with young people, raise them up, edify them, and not turn them off. Right. And uh, so I want to, I'm going to put them up one by one and just, uh, Baba Tango, if you could just, as I put them up, if you could just respond, if you could give us, give, just fill it in for us. Right. So the first thing you have you had was meet them where they're at. Could you break that down for us? Okay. Um, of, often enough, you have a child, and I'm gonna talk to those within the institutional education that you have a child in your classroom or whatever it may be that he or she has. You could perceive that they have social issues per se. And sometimes the worst challenge is to challenge them in class. And sometimes just going by them and just listen, uh, when you get a chance, we can talk privately. Okay? And when you have that conversation, it's not that you're the teacher up here and the student is below, that you want to come down to that level where the student, oh, I mean, I'm having a challenge out here, where the student or teacher are not like this, but they in equal ground in that conversation. And when you realize that you at that eye level in conversation, that whole intimidation factor is gone and they will begin to open up. It might not be at that moment, but the next moment, something is gonna crack. So that's what I meant about meeting them where they at. Right, and I presume also that as educators, we have been trained to teach, presumably read, study, went to college, got a degree. And so there's also a tendency to be, to use language, right? and references that they don't have or language that's way over their head. So you're giving these, you're like talking to somebody who's 10 yeah. years old with a college vocabulary using grown man and woman references they don't even have. So it's like, bring it, bring it down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Speaking that's French, for, speaking French for someone that has never even been to a French that's restaurant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Mm. Now, number two, Brother Tango gave us was create safe zones and establish trust. And what's so funny, I was just talking to my queen about this, but on a kind of a different level. But this idea of creating a safe place. Now, what do you mean by that, Brother Tango? These safe zones establish trust with the young people. Okay. Um, sometimes the classroom becomes the biggest challenge because you got to deal with at one time, 35, four other <laughs> human spirits at one time. And it's usually a good thing at the beginning of the year to allow the student to be empowered by just telling them, look, if at any given time you're upset about something, let's have a code. Okay? If, if you... If I see a little fist or something like that, you're telling me that you're feeling very tight about something. Okay? So instead of you acting out, you're going to let me know I'm about to blow up. So I will establish that kind of connection with the child. And when he or she knows I'm giving them a fist also, they're realizing, I'm not tell, telling you, I'm going to go upside your head. Look, the bottom line, I haven't been perfect. I have done some things that I regret. Right. Well, that was part of my learning curve. You know, I will never say that everything I've done is perfect. Some things I said, please, let me get an eraser and erase it. But I learned from it. 
you know, we're constantly evolving. So once that child notices I give him or her a fist, it's not that I'm going to punch him upside the head. They already know that I've acknowledged that they are feeling uncomfortable. Please don't call me, whatever it is. And sometimes I would go by them and say, uh, listen, why don't you do me a favor? Could you go to the office and get this for me? Is to give them that time to air it out. A post of creating a storm in the classroom. Now, having an office, it allowed me that, um, that mindset and allowing the student to have the mindset that once they, they were in that room, that no teacher could come into that room, holler, complain, whatever it was. No, you come here to talk. Okay? You're not going to lambast this particular student. And of course, whatever they said to me, it stayed with me. And the students were kind of surprised that some things that they had said, they should have been sent to jail. <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I, I am exaggerating, but some stuff were really lay. And when the teachers came in, my lips were locked. Mm. Okay. It wasn't life and death because I told the students if life, if it's life and death, I have no choice. But they knew it up front. When they revealed certain things that it didn't matter how close I was with that particular teacher, the students knew that my word was bond, trust is trust. And I used to tell the teachers, listen, give me a couple of days. You're going to see certain things, but you got to be open. And it worked. That's right. And it worked masterfully. I know from what I remember, we, our first school, for those watching, the first school where I first met Bob Tanko was CIS 166 <laughs> in the Bronx. For those who are familiar, it's, it's walking distance to uh the 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 movies over there kind of 61st street <laughs> yankee stadium in that area and it was a lot of uh street organizational activity <laughs> to put in it mildly <laughs> in that building yeah. you know and so if the if you were one of those teachers that didn't mesh with the students was kind of uh you might find your tire <laughs> slashed Oh, or you might find a, a, wind, a windshield broken. <laughs> oh, the tie is missing. <laughs> you know? That's right. Yeah, so, so, oh, listen, so, I need to say something about 166. 166, I believe that was the place that Revis found out that he couldn't check me. Uh, uh oh. Let me find <laughs> out. The truth has, has come to light. He found out he couldn't check this old man. Let him say what he wants to say. <laughs> so he <laughs> could check. <laughs> that's that's what students, he could never check me. That's what's up. That is what's up. Now, so, so family, creating these safe zones, that means we speak a, a certain type of language. We speak in a certain tone. We allow them to speak. We don't cut them off. We don't dominate the conversation with long lectures. We let We include them in it. And we make sure we tell them we won't put you in a situation knowingly. Because I've done this and didn't know it, where we embarrass the student or the child. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to mm -hmm. put you out there. We're not going to get you in trouble with your parent. We're not going to go rushing to the phone to tell your parent something you did knowing they're going to tear you down, that we're working in a slightly different direction. And once we establish that trust, then it's like, um, you'd be surprised. I, I know Brother Tango agrees. Some of the students who are a little bit challenged with behavior in street organizations, they will do anything for you. They'll be very protective of you because of that, right? That type that's of zone you created. And that, that's, that advice is invaluable, uh, Brother Tanko, like every one of these. And I'm going to move on. Uh, uh, excuse me, my brother. Uh, let me say this real quick. Yes, sir. The other, the other part of that bullet number three is, uh, to be able to own up to your own mistakes. You know, I remember a few classes that I had made some errors that was done in front of the child. And I had walked into the classroom and I apologized to that child in front of the class. 
mm. and why I was apologizing. And the students were totally surprised. I told them, mm. said, this is what I did, and I was wrong. I was totally wrong, and I do apologize to you. Okay? Mm. And I will let your parents know, because I was good in contacting parents. What I told a child, I told the parent, period. You know, I never shaded anything. Mm. And I told the parent, listen, I said this, and I was wrong. And I guess that kept me from having to run home every afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know and, and, and the last part also was a sense of silence that sometimes I just let them air it out to the point that they would ask me, are you going to say something? Says, I'm just listening. You know, the mm. more you hear, the less you say. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, you, you're you going to have to tone it down, Bob Botanko. Sister, Le Sister Lana Ransom says, listen, my mom said hello to you all. She loves y'all. Mr. Tenko, you got mommy crying. Oh, wow. Oh, Alana, you know, you ain't supposed to be listening to this thing. Now you're working me out again. Oh, and Jamil shoot. says hey, he got me too. <laughs> now, listen, just tell, tell her to give her moms a big hug. And of course, she gets double hugs. <laughs> that's right. That's oh, right. We all, this is a separate uh, issue, but at some point we should make plans to have a reunion, Brother Tanko, with uh, the original Kappa students. And maybe we don't have to just be the original nine. It could be any Kappa student came out of Kappa because it has been a real po significant population of young people who've come through and from that particular school. Now, number three, mm -hmm. And these, I should have called these, these could be called seven jewels, like mm. the prime percenters would say. Drop them <laughs> jewels, God. And pop them. <laughs> now, number three, Brother Tango gives us is use role playing and role reversal as tools to connect. Could you explain that for us, Brother Tango? Uh, one of the things that I used to do is that, well, in the counseling office is one thing that. I would play the role that I just did not understand because I believe in KISS, keep it simple. I'm going to keep the other S out. Okay. In the counseling office, it would be like, wait a minute, let, let me play your part. And you play the part of the teacher or you play the part of your mother, you play the part of your father. Because I want to see, you know, what would be the outcome? And that would be the role playing. In the classroom, I would sometimes I would stop the teaching. Hey, we're taking five minutes off. And then we said, okay, you playing this part, you playing that part, and you playing that part. And the rest of us are quiet. And let's see what happens. And sometimes that particular student is acting out. They don't internalize it because it's all an outburst. When they get a chance to see themselves, it changes. Mm. It totally changes. Okay, and that's what I mean. You know, role play and role reversals. Because sometimes that I didn't teach the class for that period because it was more important to address that situation than to let it go by. Because I don't want it to come back tomorrow. Let's address it now. Brother Tanko, do you find in your experience that the role reversal is also can be very funny? It can also be instructive to us educators yeah. and parents. Say, listen, act like me. What do I act like? And to see your child yeah. and your student get you down to a T can mm -hmm. have a way of humbling you and breaking any mythology you have about how you are or who you are, because they'll show you what they see. Yeah. If you're real mean all the time, they're going to be, right? And if you're real fun, they're going to show you. So I think that's also a very good thing for the, the yeah. role reversal. Role reversal. Yeah. It, it works. It works magic, especially when it's coming from their peers. Because, mm. you know, peers are not dealing with morals. They're dealing straight up. That's right. Yeah. And then, then the other thing is, you know how sometimes you have that particular student that really has a sense of humor. That he or she causes laughter. So I created 
Oh my God, Jessica Abreu. <laughs> Stop doing your tracks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica, how are you what? doing? Oh my God. Alana, Jessica, oh my God, the Maria's, I mean, uh, Eileen, but, but nevertheless, so, so, so it, I would allow the student that I knew that they were going to create havoc at the beginning. I said, look, this is what we're going to do. Is if you're good with your comic strip, we're spending the first five minutes before we do anything. You better come up with some good jokes. Every morning, you're going to get five minutes. Let me tell you, that lasted only two mornings. <laughs> After that, <laughs> no more jokes. Students like, come on, man, shut up. But I figured that if I constantly, could you please stop that? He or she, they were getting attention. I said, okay, you're going to be on stage. Because I had a kid at, at Kip Academy. That boy's making money with his humor. And so you can make money out of it, but you're not making any money in class. But you're going to practice with the class. So every morning you have five minutes. No, mm. Mr. Tang, I got nothing to say. Oh, and the other thing that says making home visits always work. Mm. The home visits. Oh, man, I used to love oh. it. Let me tell you something. As a child, I would have been terrified if I. But did you made a home visit with mm -hmm. my mother? Man, listen. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're right and exact about that. Yeah. I hope so. That's the option. Take your notes, family. Even if you do this, still listen to what the brother's kicking because he might look at it in a different way. We're trying to take this from just, we need to do something for our youth to, okay, what are some things that we can do to make it accessible to you? Um, now, I know another I thing. You said something about find something good about them and compliment. So, yes. Okay. So, so. Annie, Andrea Coleman, Miss Principal, let me say this to you, girlfriend. Okay. One thing I notice about Andrea, girlfriend could speak and speak well. Okay. And I remember the first time she got into a thing, I said, who is this grown up child? Put the hand on her hip and she was ready to roll. And I said, this girl could talk. Okay. And I believe the compliment that I, I, I believe I had asked her, do you sing? You have such a pretty voice. Let me tell you, whatever she had to say to me went out the window. Okay. Cause Andrea had the gift of voice. Don't let her start talking. So I'm not surprised she's a principal because she was always gifted. And besides, her mom was no joke. Okay, her mother gave her that DNA of that oral expression. So it was always good. And there was a, a the last name was uh, Corley. I can't remember her first name. And there was the other little girl that lived right on 169th Street. And I remember she used to sit by herself, all coiled up. And when I went over to her one day and I said, I said man, I'm going to take your hair and I'm going to give you mine. Because you got such pretty hair. Because her hair was impeccably cornrow. Mm. RJ, all you could see is a sister like kind of melt and give a little smile. Mm -hmm. Every time she saw me, she was a little bit more upright so that's what i mean you know find something good now now brother tanko i don't know if you know there's there there are former kappa teachers on here uh brother kill please to brother kill <laughs> mr smooth he says he says tank you were the king of the compliment <laughs> now, now brother tanko it before, didn't help me <laughs> listen to help people uh, to help people really un unpackage this, to unpack this concept of compliments, I think it's important for people to know that a compliment is not the same as flattering someone. When we flatter people, we're coddling, we're, we're pandering, we're telling them stuff we don't really believe, yeah. and it's really more for us. When we compliment somebody, we're telling them something we believe that's truthful, and it's not for us, it's for them. Could yeah. you explain for people 
who you know, black people, Latinos, we used to have a game. Oh, we got a smooth game. Would you tell them the difference? Like when you would go to a young girl and say how beautiful she was, or a young guy and say, talk about his posture, how important that was in their lives and why you did that? Well, that takes me back um, as a child that I had a sleuth of cousins that they were orphans. The mother died young and the father was never seen. All they had was the father's last name. And my grandmother raised them. And my grandfather. There must have been about eight of them. And I constantly remember the Bible and the kind, and I realized it was my grandmother's frustration in her 60s racing. No, she was racing about 12 of them. Okay. And looking back, I realized it was her, her sense of not being whole herself. So her patient was very short. So the screaming and the hollering or the Bible upside their head was sometimes that told me that that's not the way. And I understand fear, but I have an issue with someone being scared. And my cousin was scared. And that stayed with me. Because, you know, I don't want folks, students, to be scared. I want them to have fear is a sense of respect that you know what the boundaries are. Being scared, I want to stay away from you. You know, this is something that's not right about you. Okay? So that kind of mindset as a child and making sure that I will never do that. And of course, there has been moments that I had to just pretend and God knows my role playing was to the max. Okay. Pretend, but then I knew I had to walk back because I didn't want them to ever be scared of me because that's not doing anything for them or for me. But if they had a sense of fear, in, in regards to these are the boundaries. These are the boundaries and not because of me. These are the consequences if you fail to adhere to these boundaries. And the boundaries can be flexible here and there. But if you're scared, you might do something that's going to make it even worse. Yeah. So, I, um, and, you know, and it's a very touchy topic per se. Um, and especially, and I have to put it out there, my brother, I hope you don't mind. As a male, I have to be there. The best image for these young ladies. Compliment them without them feeling uncomfortable about their gender. That's right. Okay. Say things to them to empower them, but for them not to feel a little bit weird. Okay? They might not say something, but the body language or whatever it is 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 I don't I mean this is this is a topic to continue because I used to give yes, workshops sir. on these particular things, but there was always an issue. That's why I made sure. When I refer to the young ladies, well, princess, you know, I always gave them titles. That's right. Okay? Doctors or my daughters, because that creates a line. Okay. If you're not referring to someone as this could be my daughter, I don't care what the physical development of that young lady, that's my daughter. And I'm going to honor her her femininity, her sexuality, and help her to be that righteous woman without feeling that, oh my God, he makes me feel uncomfortable the way he looks at me. 
you know, when I walk by, you know, the way he embraces me, he gets too close. Or, the, you know, or he then, talks about parts of my anatomy. Yeah, you know, right. it's like, wow. And as a male, we have to be very mindful of that. And of course, we have to be very mindful at this time and age of those particular young males that are somewhat introverted for whatever reason or experiences. And we don't make them go back in that shell even further because of the things that might be coming out of our mouth, maybe not intentionally, not maliciously, but the one that we see again is the one that we have to be mindful. So we have to be watchful of what comes out of our mouth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, that's one thing that I, I admired, Brother Tanko. One of the things I remember as a young, a young brother checking you out is the way this brother to smooth over anything. I, just, I was like, now this woman came in with her face greased up, her bandana <laughs> on, her Converse sneakers, <laughs> and did he was ready to throw down. Bag, and somehow Tanko has said something, and now she's talking about, so uh, how can I help uh, with the, and I'm like, what? <laughs> that is impossible. <laughs> that is impossible. Or the, the student that's fighting everybody and and he calmed it down. It was is really uh I have to say, brother, I believe you were really gifted with that. And um <laughs> and uh I would hope that I can work with you at some point to write a book. We will to put these things out into our community for those who don't know and want to have a better a better way to interact with our youth. I think that would be really priceless. By the way, Ms. Daniels is in the thread and Ms. Daniels comments, um, oh, let me see if I can get that back to that for you. There's Ms. Daniels, you see that? Ms. Daniels here, you guys looking good. So glad to see Tanko and she's asking about uh, Queen Dawn and, and, uh, and, and your son as well. Oh, just tell me, they, they, they are the joy of my heart. And uh, listen, says when Daniel's on the phone, because I remember like Miss Daniel was at 145. I didn't realize till after the fact that Miss Daniels and myself lived a building away from each other. She lived in 1408. I lived in 1458 in Webster wow. Avenue. Wow. Okay? So like when I found out, that, and the thing about it was that, remember I said having individuals that students fear, and there was a respect in that fear. They wasn't scared, but mm -hmm. they knew that we had that staff member, and that she was a science teacher, that she wasn't going to take no mess. Come right to this class. You know what your responsibilities are. Let's do it. Leave that drama someplace else. So, you know, and I kind of, I respected that about Miss. Daniel, she was a stewardship of what is for these young ladies, how to speak, how to carry themselves at all times. You're not going to lower yourself. No, no, no. My brother, I, I, I'm sorry. Remember the time that our first year that I, I don't know if it was Miss Daniel, but one of the female teachers said to me, I'm going to put it out there, how some things were not looking right in the girls' bathroom. Mm. And we decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to nip this in the bud. And since I had such a background on human sexuality in one of those it, <laughs> individuals, because I, I'll leave that for another topic. So I had Miss Daniels and the female teachers meet with all the female students and have let's talk about ourselves our bodies because remember at one time that was the book that was given to just about every freshman female that went that went to college okay and miss daniel i forget who was but she handled the business you know and all those little girls knew that never again will they go in the in the bathroom and see certain things that should never be there because it was a place for them. And we had a conversation with the boys about their hygiene, 
how to do certain things. So we did things that no one else was going to do. That's right. And you know what, but, Brother Seiko, when I came back to Kappa years later, between 2005 and 2010, uh, when Brother Kaba Kameni, those of you watching know Kaba, Brother Kaba Kameni from the Hidden Colors series, Brother yeah. Kaba has blown up. A oh, genius. A well, genius. I met him through this brother right here. In 1997, Brother Kaba was teaching a class, man. He was way ahead of his yeah. time. He was teaching all these black social studies teachers and different types of teachers how to take Africana studies, aka black history, and incorporate it into their classes. Every aspect so of their class. So to sit at the feet of these two brothers, man, was really an amazing experience. And uh, and then brother brother Kaba was now working at Kappa because of the connection, of course, with, with Baba Tenko. And I, I believe every Friday, myself and Arevis and Brother Kaba would meet with the eighth grade boys and some of the, uh, the sister teachers would meet with the, the eighth grade girls. And I thought that was very, very important, very important yeah. time to build. It was a rites of passage because yes. that's what I did with the rites of passage. And whatever was discussed stayed yeah. there. We're not going to talk. People cursed from right. what they did. Stayed right there with the brothers yeah. and the sisters. So yeah, we try to continue that. Um, uh, oh wow! Um, I didn't even know that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And um, wow. I'm just looking at different. Um, Lewis. Okay, so Lewis says he remembers a particular talk about hygiene. <laughs> Lewis. Uh, Ariel Rivera. I hope you are well, my brother. Uh, Jonah Rodriguez says she remembers this. She gives wow. a whole tap. Uh, and then we oh, have different students. T. Harris is saying we were gifted with greatness beyond our understanding. I'm so glad she worded it that way because that's what it is. That's what it is. I'm sitting in the classroom with this brother Tanko, y'all, and Kaba Kameni <laughs> when he was back when he was known as Booker T. Coleman. Yeah. Brother. Brother Booker T. Oh, you better know it. <laughs> so now we see the brother doing it, and we and saw from the him. projects, and, and the brother was from the projects too. That's right, Lincoln Projects. In so Harlem, the brother, uh, yes, but Get out um, of town. Uh, right behind um, uh, Lincoln Center. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Oh, listen. Um, Lewis says his parents say hi. Um, and oh, Jonah Rodriguez is Jonathan Rodriguez. Sorry, we might have called him a sister. Sorry about that, Jonathan. <laughs> okay. Oh, look who we got here. We got uh, Miss Andrea Coleman. <laughs> oh my God, she is beautiful. Like I thought she was gonna be. Oh my God. Andrea, we were just talking Gracie, about that means she's years. married. Oh, congratulations. She said the lessons didn't make sense to her at 10 years old, but she gets them now. All of them, she says. That's a blessing then. That's a blessing. Praise be for that. Miss oh, God. And the she says, hi, Mr. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Listen, all of you who are Kappa students, former Kappa students, and Kappa teachers, please give our love and regards to your families because please. we know the African tradition is not just about the individual. Your extensions of your moms, your pops, your uncles, your aunts, your grandparents. Please give our love and our, our greetings to your family members. Okay? Please, don't and, forget. And, and those that uh, started with Miss Goodall on the second year of Kappa, she hasn't forgotten none of you. My mm -hmm. only regret, my brother, was that I never had a chance to be there with them. Mm -hmm. You know, because the third year was held and the fourth year I was disappeared and I was told that I couldn't talk to any of my babies. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, that's not going to happen. T. Harris, oh my God. She said the parents are visiting now. She can't wait to tell them. That's what's up. Oh, That's my God. 
just to keep uh, uh, some level of momentum. All of you watching, we're going to have uh, Baba Tanko on in a series. He got It's too much to do in one session. So he's going to be back on. But I wanted to go through the seven tips. These seven things okay. he gave us. These are things everybody can do. You don't have to be no special alien from another planet to do these things. And the fifth jewel he gave was teach them, them being the young person, the youth, how to examine their choices and examine the outcomes of their choices. Could you break that down for us, Baba Tay? Well, in psychology, it's called like natural and logical consequences. And sometimes when that child uh, makes that decision, they don't really think about it. You know, it was one of those emotional situations or reaction. And when, and that's part of that role play. when they sit back and say, well, you made that choice. Where did it get you? If that choice or those choices continue, where it will continue to get you? And to me, it was always important not to give them the answers, but for them to travel on the road and come up with their own answers. Okay, because if they come up with their own answers, the chances are that they will make the changes. And that's when, and that's uh, in regards to examining their choices and their outcomes. Thank you for that, Baba Tanko. And, and for those watching, remember that there is an art and science to this. Education is no different from engineering, mathematics, mm -hmm. physics, being a doctor, being a lawyer, you have, there's a basic knowledge you want to get, there's some preparation you want to get, and there's, when you see, and okay, let me say it this way, anybody who has kids in a school, or you remember being in a school, you know, you can walk by certain classrooms, and you, they were guaranteed to be loud, raucous, uh, unruly, people throwing stuff, people fighting, anytime you walk by them, and then, you know, there were certain classrooms you walk by, and you might hear some laughter, or the, but they were having discussion. Things were orderly. People were engaged. And you probably wondered, well, what accounts for that, <laughs> for, those, for those different things? And a lot of it is technique, having a knowledge of how to manage a classroom. So what Brother Tanko is dropping here is, is stuff we can use not only in the class, but in our homes. And if I, I can be honest without insulting our adults, these are things you can use with adults yeah. <laughs> in leadership uh, of capacity. I've had to use some of these same thing with adults. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're having a meeting that requires people to be focused and quiet as people are talking. I don't go, yo, so-and-so, yo, stop talking and think. What I do is like a teacher. I come up to them, I, I tap them, and just silently they're able to say, oh, my bad. So these are things that I learned as a teacher. For middle school, <laughs> it's not saying that we're little kids, but it's saying that these techniques are applicable no matter what the age or, or the circumstance. Life now, skills. Uh, Brother Tank, this is important. I find myself saying this a lot in my life to parents, to teachers, to leaders. The role when we talk to our kids and we're telling them, you know, don't do this, we tell them almost what to think and how to act and why they should do this. But they're getting to see, they're getting to think subliminally, Tanko, that they're studying for us. That they're doing well in school for the parents. That they're conducting themselves right for the parents. And our job is to tell them, no, no, this is for you. Yeah, this ain't for me. Mean. Right? So could you explain what you mean by that we should see our role as helping them to help themselves? That's very deep and important. Okay, I think too often, you know how we ask the student at a certain time of the year? Um, now, we don't ask them, but we should. We suggest to them, like, uh, you should be a teacher, you should be this, and you should be that. But we don't ask them, what do you see yourself being and how you're going to get there? Because of this child, and I remember this in one of my classes, in, in psychology that um, we used to call it wishful thinking or magical thinking. That if, 
if I'm five foot one, it's going to be almost impossible for me to be a ball player in the NBA. Okay. And this is what how students need to look at certain things like you five foot one and I'm telling you that you're going to be the greatest basketball player in the NBA. That student might believe that he or she might be doing it for me instead of them looking at themselves and saying, you know, some, I don't think I can make it as a basketball player, but you know, one thing I could do, I become, I might become a manager, become a coach. Matter of fact, I might even own a franchise for myself. And I believe this is what I'm suggesting in regards to that allow the students to express what they have in mind, but then also share it with you how they plan to get there. When I first started my undergrad studies, I went into engineering. I was pretty good in math, but I did that because my father did construction all his life. My father made the, maybe $125 the most in a week. I was making $150 during my summer jobs. And when I found out that thing, it really hurt me. So I said, you know, I'm gonna be in engineering and all these things so I could have my father proud of me. I suffered. I was the youngest one in class. I didn't know anything about any mechanical drafting, architectural, I knew nothing. But I stayed with it because I thought it would make my father feel good. When I finished, I didn't feel good. And I didn't understand half the things that they taught me. Now, if I went back, I'll probably do really well. But it was something that I wanted to do something for my father. My father never wanted me to be an engineer, yeah, he had, had a conversation, but he never saw me as an engineer. But I saw myself that I wanted to be an engineer for him. And I realized that my gift, if anything else, was that whole humanitarian. So the students need to find out early enough of the goals that they have and how they see the road to get there and who are they doing it for? Is this something that mom asks you if she wants you to be a doctor or dad asks you to be this or whomever's in your life, the adult? No, hear what they have to say, listen to it, be respectful. But there's a passion that you have. Seek that passion. Your parents are gonna support you. They're going to support you. They might disagree with you, but they're going to realize, man, she's good at that. She's real good. Oh, man, he is unbelievable. I didn't know you were that good. So that's basically what I meant you know, by that statement. Thank you for that, Barbara Tenko. Listen, we have Annabelle and Noah. You remember Annabelle? Yes, I do. And I, rem I remember her little sister at the zip I got stuck on her neck. Oh, that, oh, I had to. Yeah, we, 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 we had to stay after school. Annabelle, say hello to your moms and pops. I have not forgotten my babies. Hey, Annabelle. My grown. I want you to hear what she wrote, Tank. It's very powerful. She said, hello, all. This is such an important lesson. It took me a very long time to learn and apply it to my own life, and it's humble, too, her honesty. I, I am now expanding my career in school psychology. Huh? You see that impact, brother? See that impact? Yes, sir. Yep, yeah, well, brother, I almost, because I, I will be discussed, but you know, some, that's the only thing that I felt that um, was missing. 
to hear what Annabelle has just said. And because of my background with uh, high school selections, you know, and so on and so on, to me that was very personal because I've always felt that each of our students, okay, it wasn't about these choices that they give you. No, it was, it's not about what schools select them, it's for them to be able to select the school that they want. And that was the one part that I said that I wish I had been there for them. You know, even if it was on my own private time, to have been able to walk with each and every one of them, for them to select the school that was going to be best for them, not that the school that was going to select them, but, oh, I am so proud of school psychology. Listen, give your mother and your father a hug and tell your sister not to zip that jacket again. <laughs> That's right. Now, we stayed after school, my brother. I was in pain, but that little girl had heart. The heart, oh, man. But just thinking through it, man, I mean, it was stuck right on her neck. And that little girl dealt with it. Oh, they know as a hard family, my brother. Oh, man. You know, peace and love and blessings to you, sister. Hope everything's well. Give blessings and peace to the family as well, okay? And everyone here, the campus students, staff, stay in touch with each other. Check on each other. Check on each other. See if everybody's all right. How's your health? Everything, everything good. We are family, if not biologically, culturally, through this institution called Kappa, and it's very important we check on each other. Um, uh, listen, uh, Annabelle, get in contact with me because I could connect you with a school psychologist. Okay, that could guide you in that field. And Annie Gracie, my Andrea Coleman, she could sing too, my brother. Oh yeah. Her oh yeah. She had, she had I used to tell us skillets, that means they have more than one skills. <laughs> yeah, she definitely had, had a note. Yeah. Uh Andre, we, we gotta talk. I mean oh, with all of you we gotta talk. I think oh wow, this is uh this is deep. Uh Jonathan Rodriguez said coming from a fatherless household. I appreciate having men like yourselves, Revis, Williams, Anderson also, for molding us into gentlemen, regardless of how immature we may have been. You know? So that's more testimony. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Annabelle Noah is letting you know she's down. She says she's going to be starting internship soon, Brother Tenko, so she's down for that. I guess you'll okay. have to you know, exchange information. Yeah. Oh, hey, just give give her my information, and then what I'm gonna do immediately, I'm gonna give her the information of a school psychologist that I know. I okay. hope I still have that information, but that's the feel. Uh, just let her go with it. Yeah, we got you, Annabelle. Um, I will try to send that to your inbox. If not, hit me up in my inbox if I forget, and I give you uh, Brother Tanko's uh, information. Um, Andrea says she's gonna contact you, uh, Baba Tank. Okay. Uh, Listen, she, she ain't got no choice. I'm going to talk bad about her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, uh, give your moms a big hug for me, please. And I'm proud of you, Andrea. I'm sorry, Annie. Mm -hmm. Now, Tank, this is the last jewel you gave us, at mm -hmm. least for this particular broadcast, in terms of things we can do to better interact with, understand, and build relationship with our young people, which is all part and parcel of rescuing and reclaiming our young people. And you said create boundaries after allowing initial free expression. Could you explain that? Okay. Um, okay. One of the things that we established at Kappa was that before the students went into the classroom, we gave them expectations. When you go into the classroom, this is what you're supposed to do, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But there are situations that this particular child, he or she might act a fool at that moment. 
and intervening at that time is going to create havoc. And it could happen inside an office. And I know when I was in be behind an office, some of the st students called me names that my mother's never called me or my dad. And I sat there and I listened. But of course, in my brain, I was saying, your mom is that, your daddy's that, only in my mind. But I just let them talk, let them talk so they couldn't curse anymore. And I said, you got everything out? Let me say this. This will be the last time you'll ever express yourself that way. Remember this date. If you ever come out the side of your mouth again, these are the consequences. And I did it with a firm voice. If you need this, this is the way you will ask for it. If you do that in a classroom, your teacher does not have to define or express to me what you did. These are the consequences. And it was like, you allow that one strike. When you do that strike, and I think it's important because too often intervening, the MFs and the Fs and all of these things are just going to come out even stronger and harder. So I take a deep breath and I just sit back. Says, are you finished? And I remember telling some of these things. I said, okay, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to talk to me the same way in front of your mother. Because if you had good, then you're going to have to show me how good you are when I go to your home. No, Mr. Bell, no, 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 you got good, right? You said you're going to do this and that. says, okay, fine. I'll be at your house. Sometimes I knew I wasn't there, and sometimes I knew I was going. Especially they said, well, you can't come around my block and blah, 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 blah. And I let them say whatever they said. And then it's since I knew the answer, this is where you live at. Next to this block, they have this, they have that. They, you know, because they think all they see teachers, they drive out. Okay, I used to purposely, certain days, used to drive around the neighborhood so they could see me. You know, I was showboating. And what are you doing here? Oh, I'm going to visit someone's home. And I'm not telling you, I wasn't visiting anyone. But I wanted them to know. You know, this is my home too. So I allow them to have that moment of letting it loose. But then after they let it loose, and I'm going to tell you, most of the time, that incident will not repeat itself again. Wow. It couldn't happen. Yeah. Brother, Brother Tenko, this has been inspirational, enlightening, in, informative, all of that good stuff. I can tell the energy I'm feeling, but also that's resonating throughout the internet world, the comments and, and, and the love that's coming in from former teachers there, co-workers, students, yeah. and people who didn't have this cap experience where they may be friends or comrades of mine it's like wow this is they're learning a lot so i, I really thank you for that 